JavaScript was designed to for on the web and for building web pages and making them interactive. Well, there's lots of people who make web pages and many of them are not really familiar with coding. And so uh, JavaScript is allowed and browsers have made it possible to allow uh, some things to slip by without being caught and make it a little bit easier for novice beginner, beginner coders. Now, uh, we're not going to use that option. We're going to add a use strict because we know how to code and this will make our code a little bit more efficient. So at the very top of the JS file, and notice it needs to be inside quote, so it's actually a string, write use strict and a semicolon. And that will bypass that um, error message recovery process that JavaScript does for novice programmers, and it will be more efficient. It will also expect our coding to be a little bit higher standard. Now, uh, we save that and we won't see any noticeable difference. We haven't made any errors, so we'll be fine. But, um, and it wouldn't actually get rid of the one we did make where we used a capital A, even without strict, it produces errors, right? So uh, JavaScript doesn't recover from those kind of errors. We also want to use good coding style, and these are just standard practices that we use with any coding language that we, that we work with. One of the things we want to do is use consistent naming conventions. You also decide on what your variable names, what, what um, naming convention you're going to use for variable names and functions and objects and those things. We actually won't be using objects, but JavaScript does work with objects. But for um, variable names and functions, you want to be consistent in that naming convention. You want to use white space for clarity, so that's putting commands on separate lines. It's indenting um, blocks that are inside uh, if statements and inside a function. So using that kind of white space to improve readability. We also want to keep our lines compact. And notice here on this editor, there's this vertical line right at 80 characters, and that's what it means by being compact, is we don't want our lines to extend longer than that. Uh, one feature that JavaScript has, so if you have a really long line, this one is not, but let's repeat it several times and, and make it long, right? And now, and now I've done this string all the way past that 80 character line. So if I go in there and I say in the middle of this string, I'm gonna add a carriage return. Notice that my editor tells me this is a problem. It changes coloring and gets something red. And if I go back to the browser and I refresh, it's not working. So let's open our developer tool. I'm gonna to use F12 to open it. We see an error in the console. And if we go to sources, now notice that script folder is not there. So I'm gonna refresh and then it shows up and I'm going to open that up and look at tiny scripts and there it's saying there's the error right there on line 14 right and in console it's telling us that it's an invalid or unexpected token on line 14 and that's the error well to fix that uh, you can actually put a string on multiple lines but what you need to do is at the where you move to the next line put a backslash and that lets JavaScript know that this string is going to continue on the next line. Now, if we save that and refresh, oh, we still have our debugger on, so it stopped there, so we continue. That pop-up comes up and it has that long line. Notice there's no carriage return in it. Um, so that the line wraps right when it got too long, welcome to Tulsa, welcome to. So it did it here, welcome to Tulsa, welcome to. Notice that that two is in a different place. So wherever I break this, let me move it to a different place so you can see. That it, it's not making a difference in the, in the window. Let me get rid of the breakpoint. Here's how you remove breakpoints. <laughs> I'm going to continue that and let's just refresh it without a break point there. So right here, so we put it right after the first welcome to Tulsa and notice we don't see a carriage return in there. This doesn't add a carriage return. This just says the string is continued on the next line. And so the backslash does not become part of the string. It just lets the interpreter know the string continues on the next line. 
So that's a tool that you can use to make sure that your lines stay 80 characters or less. So keep those lines compact. The other thing is to comment your code. When something's uncertain or you need a, a note would add clarity, go ahead and add a comment to inform whoever might be looking at your code what's actually happening. So standard good coding practices.